Hello everybody, this is a totally improvised video about me creating a beat for a possible remix of uh, Make-A-Wish. Although there have been plenty of remixes of more or less good quality. Um, but, but basically I, I'm, what I wanted to do is create a video about how I start doing remixes. So um, what I've loaded up right now is uh, my Logic template, which uh, contains a couple of audio tracks, including uh, my microphone right now here, and um, 10 uh, software instruments so far, and all my hardware synth stuff, and a few buses and uh, the audio inputs from my interface where all the synths arrive. Uh, usually I'm working with two screens, um, where I have uh, my mixer on the on the smaller screen, right? Uh, but at the moment, since I can only record one screen, I have to work with uh, screen sets. So uh, this is my mixer, and this is the arrangement window. And in case you're interested, this is my uh, these are my environments to control uh, the Waldorf rocket, um, the effect section of the Quasimedi series, and the effect section of the um, Yamaha QY100. Uh, I've sent all these parameters already to the synths before I started recording, so this is all correct. We can go back to the arrangement window. Um, the remix or, or the beat I'm going to um, I'm wanting to do will be run at 132 BPM, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, start with some kind of electro bass line, which is which you might know from my songs. So. Um, I'm trying to make a bass line which has uh, two main basses, a percussive bass and a rather a droning bass or a, a, a long massive bass. Um, I, I already had an idea in my mind that I tried before the video um, which uh, starts with a percussive bass coming from the uh, PLG board of the Yamaha uh, S80 which sounds pretty much like this. And um, yeah, I'm just starting with this. Um, uh, my, my plan is uh, the first two beats of each bar will be uh, dominated by the, uh, the droning bass, which will be later delivered by the uh, AN1X. And uh, the second two beats of a bar uh, will be the percussive bass. And I'm starting with the percussive bass right now, which is playing uh, some 16th offbeat stuff. Uh, I know this, the song Make a Wish is in C minor, so I'm, I'm just, or, or in uh, D sharp major, or E flat major, however you see it. Um, so I'm going to. Uh, uh, do this in C minor as well, since this, this is the parallel t uh, key. So right now I'm I'm working. I'm starting with the second half of the bar. Not much so far here. The reverb might be a bit too much. Oh, I'm messing up with my screen sets. So um, the reverb is here on the input channel. I'm going to reduce this a bit. I think the last uh, one can be really a bit longer. Yeah, okay. And now I'm going to have the A and 1X to do the main bass. Uh, Meshif FM, greetings to Theory at this point. This is really loud. Uh, I'm going to do some some pitch bin stuff. Um. So let's see how this turns out. I've got this right now, this way. And so on. And 
Well, now I have to. I, I want to uh, make the last of these this drone base, the last note of this drone base, to pitch down. So I'm opening my pitch band uh, hyper draw, as it's called in Logic. So. Um, since then, since this last note is three sixteenth notes long, um, the first sixteenth note will be uh, at the normal octave. The second sixteenth note will be used to pitch down, and the third sixteenth note will be the down will stay down pitched. So, like this. <laughs> So I'm going to pitch up because I'm a nice guy and I, uh, to avoid any uh, weird artifacts I'm going to set the pitch to zero again before the next note starts. So... Um, I need to set now the A and one X to a separate channel so the A and one X arrives in my second input. This is something I do with my external mixer. Has only the um, use that I can uh, sidechain it differently. So now I am going to use my first um, software instruments uh, software instrument for the kick drum in this case. I choose my Progressive Kicks collection, which uh, is just a collection of kick drums I extracted from different songs. Uh, this, for example, is the rain, the, the kick I used in rain, and I'm going to use probably this one. It seems to fit pretty well. This is an Island Bluestone kick. Wait, this was the wrong channel. Here. And this is F2. This has a nice uh, attack, this kick drum. I'm going to start this at bar 3. Why am I starting at bar 3? Um, this is actually something that I took from the Times of Logic 5, because uh, sometimes when you start a song uh, at zero, uh, the effects that were playing right before you stopped are still fading out at this moment. So have like you start play and and I, I don't want to I don't want this to be at the uh, at the start of the music. So I leave a few bars uh, empty. Just I I say uh, effect initializing initializing gap. Also you can do a little intro uh, before the first kick starts, like a sweep and stuff like that. So you don't um, explode with a kick drum. So what do we have here? Okay, let's just make a cycle here at this point. Um, now we're going to a very important part, the side chaining. The side chaining as I know it um, works maybe a bit different uh, than you could do it in, in Fruity Loops or somewhere else. Uh, what I'm doing in Logic is I'm having my kick drum. I can name this kick right now. So this is um, sending using a bus or send. Yeah, yeah actually this is a, uh, has a send. This is a sending uh, pre-fader. So whatever I do here is not affecting um, what's coming out of the send. I'm going to use a minus five decibel anyway. This is so my um, usually kick drum level, so I have enough headroom uh, and don't get into the clipping. So um, what is bus two? I've, bus two is a bus that is prepared with a um, low, low cut filter, which cuts basically everything around, oh, say 230 hertz so uh, the whole body of the kick is cut and this bus has no output so um, it's basically just the trigger of the kick's attack you can uh, do some other um, 
triggers for um, the side chain, but I, I use this because I got used to it. And uh, the second thing that is uh, another bus where everything else is rooted to. This is bus number one and bus number one um, has uh, the main sidechain compressor on it. So everything that runs, every, basically everything that I do runs through bus one and is sidechained by that except for the kick. So I forgot this nice preset here that I called pumping. Sidechain is now bus two. So I have already in, uh, um, a little side chaining on the whole thing, but I want to do more. I want to do more. So I'm gonna copy this just uh, to this channel and to this channel, this channel here. And then I usually um, level the main bass and the, the kick to the same level. I don't know how this sounds with speakers because I'm using headphones right now, um, but it should uh, basically sound the same. Okay, so we've got these uh, three elements. Let's save this whole project right now. Um, <laughs> make a wish remix. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish this at all, but at least I'm, I'm doing a video. So right now I want to decorate uh, the base with some some base effects. Usually I, I use Sylinth for that. Let's see what we can find. So this is basically just trying. Um, where's my here? I'm going to use this, but not in the same form. I'm going to uh, apply a reverb to this, which is not long, but heavy. This is just decoration, so I cut everything that may affect the uh, main base area. Maybe add a little boost in the in the upper upper mids or highs. So I don't know how this turns out, but I'm just trying this right now. So, and now I'm going to add a heavy sidechain compressor on this because I want to make this like zip. This is actually not as uh, I wanted it to be, but it doesn't sound bad anyway. Okay. Hmm. I'm usually doing K, so right now I feel like it, adding some hi-hats. And I love using the Quasimedi series for hi-hats because um, 
you can create pretty much everything on your own. I have got something. Send mixer settings. There it is. The crisp two hi hat is something I haven't yet written into the template. So, and basically, we, uh, it's just um, an offbeat hi hat right now. Right. Where? My, my microphone, my microphone is escaping. Come back, come back. Okay, there we go. But I'm not yet satisfied with this. I... I have this uh chick chick. Okay. Um now to um give the thing more groove, I'm going to add a uh some very punchy uh, square wave, I think. Some kind of arpeggio. This is the Lindpla Chronox. Uh, I, I was supposed to make a sound bank for this, but I got lost in the middle of the process. Now I've got like a 130 sounds for this thing, but not the requested 200. I call this blip.
Okay, for me it's now time to add the clap or the snare. Um, I think I take another uh, kit of uh, kit of me. I've made a collection of uh, so-called power snares. That's how at least I call them. So, so a collection of snares, which are usually at um, at the modern progressive stuff, some eighties eighties snares, heavily compressed and EQ'd, used for s some stuff like that. Computer is acting strange right now. I'm having an idea right now. Let's see if this works out. I want to uh, decorate each fourth snare with some whipping uh, clap. See if I can find anything in the vengeance sounds. This might do. Add some reverb. So this loop is going to be two bars long. I've lost it. Great. Oh, we take this one. So this turns out. I can live with that. Um, right now I'm doing a little bit of the arrangement. I need a three, uh, no, not a 303, a 909 hi-hat. Again, I take the, the quasi mini series for this because I have all kinds of drums in this machine. I think the difference between the two bases is still a bit too much. Let's see what we can do about this. If there's something I learned uh, during the past, uh, it's that you don't, uh, you can't be too shy with the equalizer. So some boosting of 10 or 15 decibel is pretty much normal.
the crash. Don't forget the crash. This computer is right now starting to get a little bit tipsy. the other base is a bit So, what is next? I, I think I'll do some kind of a another percussive uh, synth, but in a lower region. So we have the high blip uh, from the uh, the Chronix right now, and I'm going to add a little lower synth. But I don't know which yet. Let's see what we find in the V-Synth area. Not quite. Actually, I want to have something percussive. The Wii synth is pretty much not the best synth for that. So, okay, I'm looking at my own synth collection right now. I may be going to release this There we go. Recording. This is usually easier for me than uh, programming everything. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, add a reverb uh, to this uh, synth. But not as an insert, but as a bus, because I want to sidechain this reverb. Sidechain it big time!
okay, I've uh, cutted the frequencies of the reverb so it doesn't get too annoying, just uh, to create an atmosphere. And now, side chaining. Oh, that's why. What I'm going to do now is add some more effects which um, lose up the the whole rhythm. Like this, I, I like to use this sound uh, recently. because it sounds so uh, nice, undefined. Okay, I need to pitch this down because um, the sample itself is a little bit detuned. I'm still having issues with my, with my microphone, it's escaping. Okay. Uh, okay. We stick this at minus 11. And now I'm going to um, add some virtual side chaining. I want to make this kind of reverse effect and I'm taking the controller number 11, uh, which is the expression controller, which is volume inside volume. Um, the German word is Ausdruck for this, so don't get disturbed by this. Uh, it's the expression controller. And I'm going to let's let's hear the solo. I'm going to double this to make a stereo effect since since the series is only mono. This sounds nice already. So, um, what about adding some pet? This is going to be going to be interesting again. 
because um let's do this from scratch because this um uh, creating a pad that which is gatable is a bit um different than you might think so we're going to create a really really thick pad so uh we take 16 saw oscillators Okay, and this is the basically the raw sound. Let's equalize the whole thing. We might do some fine tuning later. So what I'm going to do now, back to the mixer, I am going to make two sands for this. One bus four and one bus five. Bus five will be a trigger, prefader trigger. So I'm going to put this to no output. And on bus 4, I'm going to add a reverb. I love using the Logix reverb. This, it sounds good enough to suit me for everything. This is basically to make the sound even more thick. Okay, and now, this, this is the actual interesting part, I'm t going to take a noise gate, which um, zeroes the volume uh, if it uh, goes below a certain level. So you see the reverb is cut off right now, but uh, I don't want to, uh, the reverb to affect the noise gate, so I'm going to sidechain it with a trigger 5, which means uh, only the lead will affect the noise gate. This is the effect I want. Everything gets sidechained again. Bus 1, bus 1. Was even more sidechain right now. Let's go to the... To make this easier for me, I'm just going to add some filter. That I can control using the mod modulation wheel. Or in this case, my uh, food controller. This makes it a bit easier. Okay. Ah, don't. I don't want to close this. Yes. Okay. I see. Let's see how this works in in practice. Um. was wrong. Actually this way.
see if this works out. Quantize the whole thing. Quantize the node length. Okay, this is sounding pretty fine. Now we just can add some more decoration. I like the sound, some these a bit 90s sounds. Just, just to loosen it all up. This needs a bit more ice. I just recorded some real real time controller uh, change. And now uh, the rest is just um, some playing around, like uh, e.g. automating the kick volume. So the last uh, kick of this bar is muted, some kind of uh, transition. Okay, let's let let me have oops oops what's happening here? Okay. This is one of my favorite effects. Some some uh, reverse and another reverse sound that I use in combination with snares. Usually before every fourth snare you can listen listen to my tracks and find this in almost every one. Yeah. I 
I just need to put this where the snare actually is. And most importantly, the reversed crash, the Yamaha reversed crash. This is signature JB, JB signature. Eh? There, there it's gone. This could be another independent song as well, or it's so far it's not a pony song yet. Uh, open hi hat and closed hi hat. A bit of '90s stuff, okay. Pretty sure the mix down with uh, speakers sounds horrible, but I don't care right now. Actually, I wanted to add some, now I have to look into my list, some other uh, 90s effects um, in, in between to loosen it all up, like the sound we have here. This um, I've got a lot of uh, Euro hit stuff on my uh, QY100. And let's see what we can find there. Um, okay, bank number 72. This. Okay, I need to help myself here a bit. Um. doesn't stop when I release the key. Oh, that, that should help um, decreasing the release time of the channel. Some chorus. Oh, 
Got something. Now I need to shorten the notes. I'm not yet really satisfied with the way the baseline sounds. Silent, Silent, come to me. I need you. I want to um, just double the part where it pitches down with some uh, stereo effect. Just uh, remember, if, if you do such, such doublings, uh, do a low cut. No one needs a double bass. Now in the context. Uh, what about putting this note to the first bar? So this is basically a beat you can work with and um, the way it decorated now with um, 
stuff like melodies and bling bling and bells and whatever these sounds is up to you but um this is basically how i would make a beat at the moment uh, uh, I, I call this rhythm section so you've got basically everything you need uh, to have a solid bass like drums bass everything all these uh, gimmicks in the middle this all is to decorate a song or to 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 make a, a good ground whatever you want to call it